Okay, let us now consider a bootstrapping example in R3. And once again, the challenge is to decide which coefficient to go after first. So go ahead, pause the video, study these vectors, and decide which coefficient should be determined first. And hopefully, you decided that it's the third coefficient that should be determined first, because it is our one and only chance to get the first entry of this vector right, because the vector c is the only one among these three vectors that has a non-zero first entry. So if we have any chance of getting these three right correctly, we have to do it right here and now with the vector c. And clearly, we need to take three of the vector c. So the last coefficient is three. And we have determined one of the three coefficients. And now the question is, which coefficient to go after next? And the answer is the second coefficient, because having gotten the first entry correctly, we now have only one chance to get the second entry correctly, because between the two remaining vectors, only b has a non-zero second entry. So we need to get that right. But this coefficient is, of course, not 5 because we already have a contribution to the second entry from C. And because we took 3 of C, that contribution stands at 6. And we have to get from 6 to our ultimate goal, 5. And how do we get to from 6 to 5 with the vector B? Well, we take minus 1 of B. So minus 1 of B. And we have determined two of the three coefficients. And now the remaining one is a cinch, because we now need to get the last entry right. And let's see what our contributions to the last entry so far are. Well, from this vector, it's 9, because we have 3 of C, so it's 9, minus 1 of B, so it's 1. So we're currently sitting at 10. And we have to get from 10 to 6. So we must take because this entry right here is 1, minus 4 of A. And the decomposition problem is complete. Let's now solve this decomposition problem. Of course, it's very similar. Why? Well, because it's with respect to the same set of vectors. But let's do it anyway, and it's a good chance for you to pause the video, do it on your own, and then come back and check with us. But once again, we'll be looking at this coefficient first, and it must equal, let's see, look right here, must equal 8. So I'm expecting that numbers will get pretty large in this problem. We'll have at least 8 times 3 down the road, maybe even larger numbers. So we have to take 8 of C. That guarantees that the first entry is 8, because these two vectors cannot mess it up. And now that we have established this entry right here, we have to get minus 11 right with the help of the vector B. So we have to get to minus 11, and we're currently at 8 times 2 in the second entry. So we're at 16, and we have to go from 16 to minus 11. That's minus 27 of B that we need to take. Minus 27 of B. Just to confirm, it will take us from 16 that we already have to minus 11. There you go, minus 27. Now having determined two of the three coefficients, we reset our thinking. Now we don't have to retain anything else in our mind. We can sort of start from the beginning, but now we have this simplified problem of determining just this one last coefficient. It will help us get this last entry correctly. But let's see what we have in the last entry so far. From C, of which we have eight, we have a contribution of 24. Maybe we should write it down. Ultimately, I don't recommend writing these numbers down. It's actually great practice to retain all of them at the same time in your mind. Later on, I'll show you some tricks for doing that. Um, I'm doing it right now because I'm talking as I'm solving this problem, so I need a little bit of help. So, in the last entry, we have a country from the last vector. We have a contribution of 24. From this one, because we have minus 27 of B, and the third entry here equals minus 1, we have a contribution of 27. 
So the combined contribution is 51 from the first two vectors that were participating in the linear combination. So we have 51 and we have to get from 51 to 17, which I believe a jump of negative 34. 34, that's correct. So this last coefficient is negative 34. Okay, very good. We have solved two more complicated decomposition problems in R3. And so the point of all of these exercises is not so much to refresh your first grade arithmetic. It's to get used to the concept of decomposition in R3 and more generally Rn. And we have chosen these bootstrapping kinds of vectors to make for a decomposition problem that's not too simple and not too complicated. So we can once again ask the natural question of what would we do if these vectors were so complicated that we couldn't do it as easily as we just did. And once again, it wouldn't be so hard to come up with vectors like that. Just replace any one of these zeros with a 10 and right there you have a set of vectors with respect to which you couldn't possibly do decomposition so easily. The answer will come quite soon and it will be Gaussian elimination. So we're actually done with these simple decomposition examples and in the next video we'll demonstrate that solving any linear system is completely equivalent to solving a decomposition problem in Rn which will in retrospect give all of these exercises great meaning.